What was going on in my environment? Well, I, had, I painted this one in a studio over in Chinatown. And I had um, I'd been getting into um, showing these paintings at the Vancouver Art Gallery. And there was a show called How Soon Is Now. Um, that sort of came later after I had made the series and uh, I showed a few of the paintings with Winchester Galleries over on Broad Street in that temp space that they had there for a few years. And then um, I had a show in Vancouver with some of these paintings at Back Gallery Project. And so I was kind of showing between, um, New and also I was showing in New York in some art fairs in Miami. So I was kind of going between Victoria, Vancouver, New York, Miami, and also a few things in Europe. So I was just trying to um, branch out and show my art in places outside of Victoria, but also show it in Victoria. And then eventually I stopped showing in Victoria for a while and ended up um, living in New York. I had like old master influences like Raphael and Goya and Velasquez and Bruegel, Hieronymus Bosch, different people like that. And I was just kind of bringing them all together into something that was kind of, um, had a, a narrative but not a narrative that you could follow in any one direction, a narrative you could just kind of enter and, and kind of learn about the painting as it sort of tells its own story in that sort of way. Can you guide us on uh, what oh, happened in the elements paintings? in the painting? Well, it, it's painted in different levels. Um, and, and so, different plateaus. And in this case, it, it was deliberately made as a hunting scene. Some of them are, are a little bit um, less um, narrative in that way, and they're more non-literal. Um, uh, so, for example, there's beer cans littering the uh, landscape, and uh, people are showing off their trophy, trophies, you know, like trophy hunting. Um, so, you know, this guy has a cigarillo and binoculars and a rifle with a sight, and then there's like cans of beer, and the, and the, the, the deer kind of like were like sort of inspired by like those, those Dutch, st Dutch still lifes. Um, you know, there's like a feast and a dead pheasant and a dead deer and lobster and whatever it is. So this kind of had that feeling, but then I combined it with these figurative elements. And also uh, one of my uh, intentions was to, to do something that was somewhat um, modern, you know, something that could relate to modern times, and, but then have something that relates to like medieval art and Renaissance art kind of combined with elements from modern times, like, um, camouflage hats and um, these uh, different jackets that people are wearing. And down here is almost like um, Hans Xavier Messerschmitt sort of influence with like the extreme facial expression, if you know that artist. Um, and, um, and then, uh, yeah, just the landscape. And also I found it interesting that a landscape would have a, a um, instead of a horizon line with the sky up here and the ground plane down here, I thought it would be interesting if the sky was wrapped around the entire piece. So I had to figure out a way to kind of do that. And in, in this case, um, it is, you know, just kind of suspended. But it's also nice because it's like kind of artificial. So it also sort of relates to me for like Francis Bacon and different artists like that, that, that sort of make something real through making it very unreal and very artificial, you know, in that, in that sort of way. So that was, that was how, how this came together. And then of course like the moose is a very sort of Canadian element, but a lot of the aspects of, of the beer and, and different things like that could be considered to be very sort of American in their way. Like this almost looks like like Dick Cheney or something like that, although I don't think it was intentionally supposed to be him. People can draw out different, you know, whenever they see a figure in art, they immediately want to know who it is or what it reminds them of. Mm -hmm. Or even stylistically, they want to say, oh, well, that painting looks like this or looks like that. And so I wanted to do something that really, like, had an originality to it that could be um, 
my own style, my own stylistic stuff that somebody couldn't say, oh, well, he wants to be this artist or he wants to be that artist. Or, mm -hmm. And so that's very difficult to do. It takes a lot of research. It also takes a little bit of self-confidence to be able to just do something that isn't based on somebody else's idea entirely, you know. Um, and certainly our ideas from medieval art or from Renaissance art have not been exhausted. So I kind of get the feeling if, if I find something there or if I find something even outside of painting to influence painting, instead of the, in, the history of art, like the history of cinema or the history of, um, you know, needlework or the history of, you know, something else, just something outside of art, the history of fishing and hunting or, you know what I'm saying? And then apply that to art and make art out of that is interesting. Not necessarily making art out of the history of art. I think people can get a little bit too tied up in that idea. I kind of like the idea of just making art out of any, anything almost. Making art out of it is interesting. Not, I don't mean materially, I mean like, um, so, you know, psychologically or whatever. Make art out of a beauty pageant or, you know, doesn't really doesn't have to be painting about art history. That's, but there is some of that to this. So.